Hi, I'm Dan Maglano from Tatsu Dojo, and in just a moment I'm going to show you how I made and how we use a unique design of a Makiwara striking post here at our school. Now, the first part of the video I just want to let you know is really for people who are relatively new to striking arts, or maybe you're having problems with chronic injury. You might want to watch the first part of that video where we just we kind of talk about you know basic mechanics and all that. And then the rest of the video is on how we how we made the Makawara board and um, different considerations for its use. So I hope this is beneficial to you. Thanks a lot for watching. This is my Makiwara. I'm gonna in just a few minutes. I'll show you how I built it and how I use it. But let's just talk just really quickly about learning how to take impact. So. Um, you know, I, I think it's really important that you, you start with something. You don't start right away with a full on, you know, board. You, you need to have something that's padded and maybe like slowly over time you take away pads or, or you, you make something a little bit harder. Because again, it's just like walking, okay? So you don't want to start out hitting a, a you don't want to start out hitting like this. You know, that, that takes time to develop that so you're not damaging like your knuckles and the bones in your wrist and all that. So what you do, just using Seiken Punch as an, as an example, is when you're learning how to hit something hard, you start by making sure that when you hit, you are, you're using your first two knuckles, if you're doing karate, for example. And uh, I know that there are different styles that teach different things, so my apologies if I stepped on your coattails, but for, for us, I'm using those first two knuckles and this is how I teach students to punch initially and they get bored and I'm like look I'd rather have you bored than hurt and then over time and again we're talking about hitting something hard not like not like a pad you know you can go a little harder on a pad but I go into that later in other videos but when you're hitting something like this you want to do this for a while same with any other strike that you're using so if you're you know, if you're doing shuto, for example, a lot of people do shuto, the, the uh, knife hand strike, they do it incorrectly. They'll, they'll hit like that, right? And that's how you bust up your fingers and bust up your knuckles. You know, you really have to learn how to hold your hand the right way. And the way that you do that is slowly, methodically, and your body's going to tell you when you can go a little bit harder. You know, another strike, for example, is haituzuki, the rich hand. A lot of people mess up their elbow on ridge hand because they've never been taught how to do it properly. So they end up doing that and they over rotate the shoulder and they hyper extend the arm. You know, that elbow should be down when you do high tazuki. And so you're hitting here, right? So that's a very small spot to hit, really. And so you don't want to start off by going, you know, you don't want to do that, you know, if you're like maybe, you know, two to six months in. This is something that your teacher hopefully is telling you, showing you on something that, that hits back a little bit. This will hit back, but really, like I have my students start this slow because this will really hurt you if you're not careful. And then as time goes on, you know, so, it, and that's the way it is with all of your strikes, but it's just like walking, you know, it's something you have to do a lot of. You know, like, you know, when you were learning how to walk, you did it every day, right? You, you never just laid in, in your crib all day, right? You, your, your parents got you up, hopefully, and they, and they you know, they, they gave you opportunities to practice those skills, to build up your bones, your muscles, and your nerves. Striking is the same thing. So this is something you have to be consistent with at least three days a week. And over time, if you do it that way and you're, and you're working on your form and hopefully you're, you know, you have a decent teacher or teachers who are, who are showing you that, then over time, you'll be able to hit things pretty hard. And so, okay. So this is kind of a, a large zoomed out view of the, uh, of my Makiwara. Uh, obviously it does not look like a traditional Makiwara and I'll explain that in a little bit why I did it this way. But you can see what I did was I used two two by sixes and you'll see why in a moment here. But standing out from this view, you can also see the two table legs sticking out. That's what those are. Those are cut off kitchen table legs. And that's what I use for forearm conditioning, which I'll show you in a little bit. 
Now, in the first version I made of this, I actually used uh, dowel rods. But the problem with dowel rods is number one, you know, you, you've got to get you've got to get something that to actually you know cut cut the hole the right way to screw those in, and then you have to sand them all. The, you have to resand them and restain them, and and you know put put more covering over them so they don't splinter off. And I just I got tired of that because I use I use this just about every day. So you can see most table legs that you get at the store, you know, they have, they have this coating on them and it just, it doesn't wear off. And so I've been using this one, whoops, I've been using this one now for probably about six years. Um, I think I, this is, yeah, this is, this is one I've been using for about six years. But, and then you're, you're probably wondering, okay, well, what's all the tape and the uh, wrestling mat? That's what this is. It's wrestling mat. Now I know this is not a traditional makiwata, but uh, you know, like right now in Ohio, it's it's uh, February and it's like 20 degrees out, and it's not that warm here in the dojo this morning. And these are like a brick, you know. So yeah, they get a little softer, and yeah, it's not rope, you know. But there's other ways to condition your knuckles. What I wanted was something I could hit and work on precision, but hit hit hard. And you see that mine's pretty tall. I'll explain all that in a little bit. This is the base. So all I did was I made a pocket that you'll see, you'll see how it goes in here in a little bit, but I made a pocket out of two by sixes, pretty simple design. And then for the spring, so that it has some give, these are shelving brackets that I just, I cut off and you can see it's, it's well used. I bought those new, so, and it's just a couple of bolts holding them in. Now on the bottom, What's holding the base on is those long landscape timber screws. They're like, they're probably like two and a half, three inches long. And you know, you, you wanna, you'll wanna pre-drill obviously. Um, but again, I've been using this for six years. I've never had a problem with the base. You can see it's still pretty firm on there. The only thing that I would have done different, you, you'll see, uh, but this, the, the platform isn't really long enough to stand on. It's wide enough, but it's not long enough. My, my foot usually goes off the back. So I would have done that a little differently so, it, so I wouldn't have to put it against the wall. That was my original idea. But anyway, this is the design and we'll get on to how I use it. Okay, first off, as you can probably tell, I'm not a video guy, I'm a martial arts guy. I'm a martial arts guy trying to make videos. So, uh, so I know there's better ways for angles and lighting and things like that. But I have had a few of my students and a few other people ask me about how I did this and, and how I use it. So I wanted to I wanted to get this up there. So so first I'm going to kind of give you the long the, uh, the the long picture of this, and then we'll go into specifics as far as striking is concerned. First, this is how the pocket works. So literally, you just take it out, put it in. Easy day. You know, and that's, and again, see, it just makes it a whole lot easier to store than like having something fixed in the ground. So you can kind of see this is a, you get a little bit of an angle of our dojo here. It's not a big space. Our dojo's in a three car garage on my property. And you know, the last thing I wanted to do was to break open the cement and to put like a mock water bar that was just gonna be in that same spot. Because you know, as we, progress we're going to get like new equipment and things like that and i want to be able to move things around like my mako water so that's one of the reasons why a long time ago i decided to make something that was portable like this you know in the summer when it's nice out you know i can take this outside um, i've coated the bottom with some some of that uh, grit stuff so i can do it on cement uh, i can take it out in the grass when it's or because you know we, we have uh, we'll have rocks out there this summer so, you know, it's just, it's just nice and portable and I can take it where I want and I can stand on it and it's great. So, now, you guys are going to see, especially some of our, my traditional, very traditional karate friends out there, you're going to see this is a little too much give. So, I'm, I'm telling you right up front, I know that, I know it's too much give. It's like seven years old and I've been pounding on it, you know, four or five days a week. You know, so it's it, it's kind of it needs some shoring up. Um, uh, what I thought about doing is putting a shim in there, but that's 
I'm, I'm just going to build a new one once the wood prices go down and the, you know they're not so crazy like they are today. But I know this is, is a, a little too much give. You really want it to be pretty stiff, and that's what the uh, that's what the shelving brackets are for, right? But uh, so just so you know, I know that. So I mean, don't blow up my comments section with with that, if you would. Uh, so. Again, blocking. This is why I like this table leg so much. So working on form conditioning, you can see it really provides a good stable base for me. I can really plow into these. Traditionally, makiwara, uh, you know, they're like, they're about here, and that's the top. And that's so you can primarily practice seike, right? Very few pictures in any books that you, that you find on, a, on old karate training have a tall makiwara. But I wanted something where I could practice, you know, not only hitting the belly, but also practice precision striking, hard striking, fast striking against all angles of the body, you know, up, you know, upstairs and downstairs, if you will. Okay, so, but you can see with this against the wall, it's not going anywhere. So my traditional strike. Okay, so it really allows me to, to zero in and hit hard, um, hitting up top is a little different because it's a flat surface, so you have to bend your wrist just a little tiny bit, but you might have to anyway. You know, if you think about it, uh, most of our, you know, the advanced karate kata or taekwondo forms or, you know, kung fu forms, you know, they all have, you know, face hits or neck hits. I mean, I'm always thinking about the neck, not necessarily the face, but the neck. But, you know, you, you, have to, you have to hit, you have to hit things the way that you practice or else you're just kind of wasting your time with, with kata and forms if you're not hitting the way, you know, hitting hard things the way that you do the kata. I mean, why, why do the kata then? Why not just hit a bag and, and call it a day, you know? That was my thought behind building this. So this allows me to build, to, to use all of my strikes at different locations. So for example, you know, you've got double strike. Doing double strikes on something like this really forces me to, to narrow in my striking, right? So you know, because I really have to fix myself on the board. Shoot though. Uda. Back fist. Short thick. Or the way we do it in uh, some kata, come for the ribs. Just kote. Upstairs. Empty. I live in Ohio, it's cold here, it's, it's winter time. This is like hitting a brick right now. It's not always like this, but it's, it's hard, but it's good condition. Now, you might be able to tell from the video that this is a little bit wider down here. You know, it comes out here. And that's because 
You know, primarily, um, I mean, we, we do teach some high kicking, but for me, and then, you know, especially if you're, you know, if you're an older guy, I'm an older guy, you know, my days of, of doing roundhouse up here is over. And, and, uh, and really for the street, for me, I wouldn't roundhouse somewhere to the face anyway. So I wanted to build something that would allow me to, to practice again, practice what's in the kata, but also practice precision striking on low targets hard to build up that power you know, and it's not like hitting a bag. It's just, I mean, you guys know that. It's just, it's just a different feel. You know, the energy dissipates differently on a bag than it does on something like this. Okay, so this little ridge represents uh, the symphysis pubis, which is right here. Okay, why would I do that? Well, because that's like if I front thrust or side kick somebody, that's where I'm going to do it. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to do it in the belly. You got muscle and you know. A lot of Oedipus tissue there that you have to get through. You kick somebody right here, fight's over, right? So that's what that reg is, is there for, is to remind me where that is so that when I'm practicing my gate, I hit that spot, okay? Same for all, all, all of your other kicks. Uh, Kokato gate. Great for Kokato gate because, you know, Kokato gate is the heel kick is really meant to either hit the hit above the knee or the hip. We teach hitting above the hip a lot. It's a very precise strike, but it really bends somebody over. So, Okaku Getty, for example. So, you can see how, you know, this, this just allows me to do just about all of my training. You know, now, of course, that's not the only thing I use. I built a heavy bag back there, and if I get enough interest on this video, I'll show you how I built the heavy bag. It's not what you think it is. Um, to me, it's a lot better, different video. But, you know, I can do all of my, all of my precision striking on this. I can hit hard, you know, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm getting a workout, but I'm doing all the things that I, I want to be able to do with this, and that's why I built this. Well, we hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a little bit on the long side. I really wanted to take some time to explain certain things and uh, because I know some people have questions about this. You know, so if you like the video, please feel free to hit that like button and our website uh, is listed in the description down below as well. We are gonna be putting out more videos, but if there's something specific you'd like to see from us, please feel free to leave us a comment in the comments section. Thanks a lot for watching.